I quickly want to remind you that after the Pitch CMO Summit, there is the happiness flowing your way with the Pitch CMO Awards 2021, which gets bigger as well. So be with us because the happiness will prolong and celebration will only take place with that. With now, it's now time to move on and join in in the fireside chat. And first, I want to welcome the first person. Well, somebody who holds the key of super amazing thought, and that is bringing wellness towards a greater heights. But he's a man who's driven this towards a great perfection. An honor to welcome him here at the Pitch CMO Summit. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Director Imami Limited, Harshvi Agarwal with us right now. And joining him, yet another amazing personality who is a leader, who is thought was person and always delivers the best in best when it comes to the knowledge and being creative and objectified. Please welcome our head for network sales, Viacom 18, Mr. Mahesh Shetty. And joining the two in the fireside chat, our very own superhero, chairman and editor-in-chief, BW Business World and Exchange for Media, a very dearest, Dr. Anurag Batra. Over to you. Thank you so much, Mithin. Thank you, Mr. Agarwal, for joining us. And, you know, again, uh, Imami really uh, doesn't really need an introduction, uh, but I will uh, introduce what you do and at least uh, bring your brands to the fore. Welcome, Mr. Mahesh Shetty, for joining us. And uh, clearly, again, uh, what you do is well known. Uh, Imami is a powerhouse of brands. And uh, uh, today's whole day has been about brand purpose. I mean, uh, Imami has Boro Plus, Case King, uh, Mento Plus Bomb, uh, Imami Golden Beauty, Imami Naturally Fair, Imami Imun Soul, Cream 21, and I can go on. These are brands that are built uh, on the brand purpose of bringing well-being to consumers. Now, uh, Mr. Agarwal, uh, Imami is a very, very venerable brand and business, and it was set up many, many years back. How do you make sure that you live the brand purpose on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, and especially in the last 12 months, the brand purpose must have been tested. Give us a sense of how you make sure that you nurture the brands using the brand purpose. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dr. Anurag Batra, uh, for having me here and also for introducing our company. I think, see, honestly, brand purpose is something, you know, which can really make a very, very big difference in the overall performance, the growth of the brand and the company. Uh, but my belief is, you know, not too many brands or not too many companies have very clear brand purpose or neither do they follow. In our company, you know, uh, for the company, we have a very clear uh, mission and I would say the philosophy and you might also call it the purpose is making people beautiful and healthy naturally. So basically the word naturally, you know, is what is very, very core to us. How do we make people beautiful and healthy, but with the help of nature. And in fact, every day, whatever we do, the products we launch, the brands we launch, it's all around the brands and the products bringing in nature to them. How do we bring the best of the nature to the consumers? Be it the beauty products, the personal care products or the health products. So from that perspective, yes, we are always in lookout for the best of the ingredients because there are so many unknown herbs, etc., which are there, which are used in different parts of the countries. And they might have very, very different benefits, but people are not aware of it. There are herbs which are very, very efficacious, but still which are not unknown to the people. So we spent a lot around R&D as to how do we explore them, how do we find out about them, and how do we bring them to the consumers. Then is the quality of the product, you know, because ultimately if you have to give the consumers the best of the health, you know, so how do you be, how do you remain true to it? How do you give the consumers 
the best of the products with the help of the nature but you know with really quality products so that is something you know we are very very particular about um mr agrawal clearly uh, when we talk of health uh, we these just talk of ayurveda we talk of you talk to natural health uh, there is a huge movement uh, towards uh, ayurveda there is a huge movement toward natural ingredients in in health products and in beauty products so clearly um, uh, you know i would like to know from you how is imami how is imami kind of leveraging this movement uh, to be able to bring out new brands and new products uh, that enhance the quality of life and in the last 12 months one of the biggest things from a health standpoint is immunity you know health uh, was always very important but covid has made sure that our focus on health as individuals and as a society has gone up and uh, we are looking after health even more than we ever did so tell us uh, how are you making sure that uh, the increasing awareness about the source of ingredients uh, what is being used in the product uh, is going up you know people can search and find out people look at the product before they buy so what are you doing to be able to leverage this trend of one of you know organic products of ayurveda of natural ingredients and second is last 12 months the focus on health in every product if you see the uh, average communication of any product category which is, is utilized inside the body or on the body you know the health benefits are being touted you know upfront much more than they were 12 months back so give us a sense of how is imami building on the brand promise of providing uh, you know uh, natural ingredients in its products so yes uh, immunity has been something which is which the consumers are looking for and yes covid has something really uh, increased the need of that so in the last 12 months since covid you know i would say in fact in the first 3 to 4 months uh, we launched more than 15 products around immunity uh, so we were very very agile and with speed we could launch more than 15 products uh, around that uh, in totality in 6 months you know we could launch more than 30 products in our company and all products which were relevant to the covid needs so be it health be it hygiene so we launched a whole range of hygiene products under our brand boro plus which included you know sanitizer hand wash the soaps etc because we believe you know the brand boro plus had the right to win in that segment and certainly you know covid made us believe that no secondly in the health you know jhandu uh, which is there for ayurveda consumers are looking for more solutions which are natural which are ayurvedic the trust around ayurveda has increased and people were looking for the solutions so yes and third we also launched a range of home range of products which was around the area of hygiene again you know but not personal hygiene but home care be it surface cleaning kitchen etc everything so yes as a company we were very agile uh, and with speed we could launch so many products and yes all of them based on nature of course because that is what we stand for and uh, uh, we believe you know we have given the consumers products which they needed in fact i would give you one example of you know we have launched a chavan prash Uh, which is made of jaggery you know because all other chavan prash are made of sugar you know they have very high high content of sugar in it so for the first time in the market we launched a, a chavan prash which is made of jaggery to make it more healthier so our continuous endeavor is how do we make products which are healthier and which consumers can consume without any worry innovation the small innovation of using jaggery so that to get can have huge impact on the health now jandu uh, was an acquisition that you did in 2008 right uh, the company has grown through many acquisition of companies and brands as we move into 2021 and i had to 2021 do we see imami doing more uh, acquisitions 
uh, are uh, new brands uh, becoming part of your portfolio uh, on the horizon? Yes, of course. I think you know uh, uh, acquisitions have been a part of our strategy, and it will always remain to be. Uh, we have done some very successful and very large acquisitions in the past, and we have been one of the most aggressive company in this area uh, in the country, right from uh, Jandu. Then we acquired Cash King, and right now what we are also doing. Yes, we are open for more acquisitions. Uh, uh, to answer you directly to that. Give, if we get the right opportunity, the right brand at a right value, yes, we are open to more acquisitions. Be it small or big, we don't mind. Even if it is regional brands, if it is national brands, we are open for it. And at the same time, not only the acquisitions, because we believe the times have changed, we are also looking for more partnerships, you know, partnerships with the digital first brands, because that's a new ecosystem which is which has opened up. So how as company, you know, we can partner with such entrepreneurs, with such companies where one and one, you know, where where we come together and instead of becoming two, how do we make it 11? Because everybody has its strength. And we believe, you know, as a company, we can't do everything, right? So it's very important that we partner with the right kind of people, the right kind of company, so that it gives us an, an entry in the categories or areas where we are not present. So yes, acquisition and partnership will be two areas of future strategy as well. Thank you so much, Mr. Agarwal. My last question before I bring Mr. Manish Shetty into the conversation and make it a three-way conversation. Uh, you know, the last 12 months uh, to build on what you said have what I call a 3C economy. Collaborative, you talk about the partnerships. Uh, compassionate, because whether it's our channel partners or its employees, uh, we need to be more compassionate and uh, the environment has made us more compassionate. And third is contactless. Uh, you know, everything has become contactless. We're doing this event uh, virtually. Uh, but there is a rise of B2C brands, digital to consumer, direct to consumer. Uh, now, I know that Imami is one of those FMCG companies uh, who got into selling their products online uh, pretty ahead of time. Almost all your products are available online. And I want to ask, in the last 12 months, how much of your sales have gone online? And are you looking to build some D2C products, uh, uh, some new brands, uh, but are true to the purpose uh, that Imami stands for? Yeah, of course, uh, Dr. Anurag, you know, I think direct to consumers brands, products are only going to grow. We very strongly believe in that. Yes, in the last one year, our sales have also multiplied. Right now, will be somewhere around the range of 3%. But we have aspirations that in the next two years, how can we take this to around 8 to 10% of the overall sales? And this will be happening not only by growing the sales of the existing products, but at the same time, uh, we have already launched and we are in the process of launching many new products under the existing brands which are targeted towards the consumers or which will be only selling through the e-commerce route. Secondly, yes, we are also working on many D2C brands itself, you know, which we believe has potential and which we want to launch again, you know, in the e-commerce platform and maybe, you know, the, in the modern trade, but yes, more targeting this niche segment and the audience. So going forward, I certainly believe, you know, there is a lot of future. In fact, in Jandu, uh, we launched we very quickly after COVID. So by July, in just three to four months, we launched a platform of Jandu, you know, where uh, we were selling all our Jandu products to the consumers directly. So apart from the 3P platform, we have also created our own platform where we sell products. Then digitally, we are also, the consumers can come and take or consult with doctors, Ayurvedic doctors, again, because a lot many people at that point of time didn't want to go to doctors, etc. So even we launched those services there for the people where they can call and uh, uh, share their problems and consult the Ayurvedic doctors as well. So yes, I think uh, this is again going to rapidly 
only increase and as a company we want to very strongly be part of this uh, trend thank you so much mr agrawal uh, i let me bring in mr mahesh shetty into the conversation mr shetty you heard mr agrawal uh, i heard mr chandu kalro who is the md of ttk prestige just before that and clearly uh, one of the things that have come across that for companies like imami companies like ttk prestige that last 12 months have been actually very good they've been able to live up their brand promise and uh, through what they've done uh, they've been able to grow their numbers uh, you know in a very tough year for most categories so yeah. as 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 a media brand as a media platform that partners these brands in growth what are the top 3 changes you have seen in the brand's approach uh, when they do conversation with you mr shetty um you know uh, if i just uh, look at uh, the overall 12 months uh, uh, you know it's 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 not uh, uh, it's not one story actually uh, um, if you look at q1 um, uh, i think harji would also agree with me actually none of us uh, were sure how things will pan out and uh, in uh, quarter 1 of this financial year most brands actually cut down on their spends uh, and uh, uh, i think there was uncertainty and that led to uh, that kind of a decision also uh, uh, in terms of uh, communicating to consumers and uh, uh, generating uh, you know brand pull when the consumer cannot go to the store to buy okay and when there was a situation of lockdown actually did not make sense and uh, so if you see in terms of uh, brands and their uh, uh, spends q1 was a very different phase where brands held back uh, their spends uh around uh, uh, q2 which is around june is when uh, uh, you know the market started opening up lockdown kind of you know uh, 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 came down across the country and uh, stores opened supply chains kind of were streamlined uh, that's when uh, brands uh, got back to advertising and i think the kind of response that some of the categories got and i would say fmcg being the flag bearer of this entire i would say the consumer momentum and uh, uh, companies like imami or prestige and hul uh, racket i mean i think uh, they really uh, drove the uh, the entire category and uh, i would say uh, you know the momentum on uh, any media company including us and uh, q2 saw their businesses coming back okay uh, and uh, you know showing strong growth and uh, uh, that impacted their entire uh, outlook towards media and uh, uh, i say you know media is a reflection of how the economy does and how key categories perform uh, overall uh, i would say television and i would say that about television because uh, uh, you know uh, the bread and butter of television advertising is fmcg and since fmcg is a category kind of pulled back and h2 which is the second half of the year so very good traction from brands uh, across categories uh, while uh, uh, you know there were challenges for most media companies where you know uh, there was anti china sentiment uh, and because of which certain categories stayed off uh, certain brands stayed off actually uh which was in the mobile category or in uh, you know uh, i would say uh, uh, gaming uh, uh, certain categories within fmcg also uh, faced uh, you know uh, headwinds uh, 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 and uh, in some some of our regional markets some of the local retail channel you know clients also faced a lot of headwinds because of the lockdown and people not moving out uh, however uh, uh, you know that got kind of covered up by some of the new categories that came up so edutech was a you know so the entire category saw a huge uh, boom last year i mean i would say that I mean, when i say last year this current financial year and uh, 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 gaming saw a huge boost uh, also d2c company saw a huge boost and one of your speakers today uh, varun alag his brand uh, came on board uh, for the first time i, I think it was their biggest uh, marketing bet they came on uh, big boss as one of the sponsors and uh, i would say it was a very bold move from his side uh, he was personally involved in that decision making and uh, uh, so uh, i think uh, uh, overall uh, there is a uh, you know entire sense of optimism and that's also because consumers are going out and uh, uh, you know uh, 
opening up their wallets and spending money on in a specific categories so uh, uh, and that has also led to brands also going back and you know uh, going back to uh, communicating their brand purpose their entire marketing campaigns uh, yeah so overall i think when we started off which was a q1 uh, sense of uncertainty and we are ending the year of financial year with a you know a sense of optimism uh, going uh, you know as we go across the coming financial year okay thank you so much mr shetty for sharing uh, sharing those inputs and clearly yes the first uh, two three months of the lockdown saw a supply side issue and saw demand side issue uh, retail was closed uh, physical retail but what it did subsequently was that it brought in the whole omni channel experience Absolutely. and during the festive season really the omni channel experience led to record sales for certain product category and you write a lot of fmcg brands have utilized the uh, the second quarter to up the end in terms of spends on television because uh, uh, an increase in share of voice uh, would augur well for growing the market share in the immediate uh, short term and clearly um, uh, partnership became the order of the day uh, yeah. if you had to going forward mahesh uh, three trends uh, that you see becoming bigger these trends may have been trends that you saw in the last 12 months and some of them germinated uh, during the post covid phase but are possibly likely to stay what are those two or three trends that you see becoming bigger and likely to say from a um, media brands partnering uh, large uh, fmcg companies like imam um, i think uh, i will go beyond fmcg uh, i think one of the key trends is that uh, 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 i would say last 12 months has fundamentally changed consumer behavior and uh, there are new categories which have uh, uh, become very intrinsic part of uh, the consumer's life uh, edutech has become an intrinsic part of uh, consumer's life uh, today uh, you know last 12 months my kids have just been doing online uh, education uh, and uh, uh, that's happening across the country uh, across every from small town to big town to uh, you know uh, all across and uh, edutech as a category okay is uh, booming and uh, in that brands are uh, you know looking at uh, you know uh, building their own uh, uh, equity and uh, uh, loyalty with their own consumers i think so uh, brands which uh, uh, have been uh, you know have become part of consumers life okay because of the behavior change in the last 12 months are here to stay Uh, because now they're intrinsic part of the uh, consumers i would say uh, buying basket uh, it could be uh, edutech is just one example but uh, also uh, there is gaming uh, because uh, you know uh, young uh, youngsters were not go stepping out uh, so online gaming uh, there, there was a huge boost and uh, uh, so what was growing at a uh, x space has gone at 10x space and again because as those brands are becoming part of consumers uh, uh, you know life uh, so those, uh, there are brands within that space there are more brands coming into that uh, entire space and the, there are more brands wanting to spend money to build their own equity so these uh, categories will actually be very important as we go ahead uh, uh, as far as advertising go secondly uh, i think uh, consumers have become very comfortable uh, uh, dealing directly with the uh, brands so uh, uh, you know uh, the adoption of online has uh, again moved up uh, 10x okay in the last 12 months and consume uh, so if you see uh, uh, across markets uh, uh, if you just go on facebook or instagram you will be flooded with uh, new brands who are trying to engage with you Uh, as we speak in bombay i keep getting notifications from a uh, trouser brand called bombay trooper or ice cream brand called noto these brands do not exist okay and uh, uh, and uh, they are also uh, uh, you know forming their own niche of, and uh, uh, with time they are also growing now as uh, uh, they uh, go beyond a particular level they will have to move on to mass media okay to get to their own uh, you know uh, The, uh, the the ambitions that they would have uh, they would plan for themselves going from one city operation to a pan india and i think these brands which are direct to consumer will also uh, be uh, over a period of time in the coming years be important part of the 
overall uh, you know uh, advertising your bouquet of clients thirdly i would look at fmcg i think fmcg uh, like i say is the flag bearer of uh, uh, you know i would say television advertising or overall mass media i think they understand consumers the best and they understand uh, the fact that consumer loyalty is very important and then investing in brands is very important and uh, that's why uh, uh, you know when uh, uh, the unlock process started okay i think uh, the fmcg brands uh, uh, and uh, i would compliment her, you know harsh ji also for uh, you know uh, while we have with his team we keep having uh, you know uh, a lot of negotiation discussions but what i really appreciate is the uh, uh, you know the uh, the fact that they went out and invested in you know building the brands or uh, you know communicating the brands and uh, uh, and this is across board and i think uh, uh, fmcg brands know it very well they understand that being in uh, the consumers uh, consideration set is very important and hence communicating actively is very important so uh, i think this is something that we will continue so uh, broadly speaking new categories which is uh, which have emerged in, in the last 12 months okay will become big brands in the coming days uh, uh, newer ways of engagement which is direct to consumer brands which are very small will i think grow and fmcg will continue to drive uh, uh, the you know uh, to to be strong and uh, continue to drive uh, uh they spend on advertising to uh, hold on to their consumers so yeah that's what i think would be the three trends thank you so much mahesh let me ask uh, mr agarwal the last question uh, before i hand it over to mithun and uh, the last question to you mr agarwal uh, you know brand purpose uh, has become more important in the last 12 months a lot of things that we talked about they were good in company brochure or in the boardrooms have actually come into play uh, profits have always been important but purpose people planet have become very important sustainability and esg has become very important and uh, i want to know uh, when it comes to the planet uh, when it comes to sustainability uh, what is imami doing to be able to kind of uh, stay ahead of the game and contribute to mother earth uh. dr batra you know let me answer it in a different way because what i believe uh, sustainability uh, because all this are always taken as purpose for the corporates my belief is you know they cannot be the purpose of the company because if you see you know very simply if i say what is the purpose of the company you know uh, it can be very simply defined as why how and what right so all the company knows you know what they do what kind of products they sell right they know how they are doing it you know what are the unique selling proposition etc but why they do it i think most of the brands companies are not at all clear why they do it in fact for me you know this thing of sustainability uh, good to the society etc has been you know because there has been a lot of talk about purpose mission etc and so on and i think you know they are just good to have kind of a purpose but from the perspective of the growth of the company it has to be more strategic towards what you do and why you do rather than so this the thing of sustainability etc is more very peripheral to the overall company's purpose they cannot be the core purpose of the company right but yes for every company's agenda you know yes sustainability uh, is always a part of it so yes for us also now whatever plastics that we consume now how do we ensure that you know the same is what is being recollected uh, uh, by the vendors is what we ensure so from that perspective you know to ensure that you know whatever is being used by the consumers is recollected and recycled and so we there are vendors you know with whom uh, we have come into some kind of uh, contract where they buy that much kg of plastic you know what we consume and recollect and recycle it apart from that yes we do a lot of csr activities where a uh, a uh, planting trees etc are part of that right 
but uh, uh, i wouldn't say that sustainability again is the purpose of our organization fantastic so you're saying that you know it you know the why is equally important as how you do it uh, so clearly the organization leaders that can bring this common thread across their organization of why and build it in the brand purpose in the way they build their brand they build their businesses uh, sustainability will automatically be a part of it it may uh, be a part of the strategy of the organization uh, thank you mr agarwal for uh, talking to us and i know you may not want to answer this question but we are very close to the bengal elections love to know from you who would win i think I anybody's guess you know uh, in fact uh, i would love to hear your view on that see i i live in delhi i i talk to my friends i do look at the satta market uh, for trends because they are mostly accurate uh, i looked at all the polls and right now the polls as of yesterday uh, were giving tmc an edge over bjp but it's a close contest today the prime minister did his rallies and obviously that has its own impact uh, uh and bjp uh, leaders including mr shah have been saying that they'll win uh, more than 200 seats in bengal uh, but on the ground it seems like you know it's a close contest with tmc being little ahead uh, that's how it is on the ground tmc so, is given between 60 to 65 seats by almost all polls between 156 to 165 okay uh, bjp is being given between 90 to 108 seats 25 to cpi and cpm and another 5 to others so really as of now that's including the group that mr shetty is part of these are broad numbers that the group has talked of but really uh, elections are fought in, in the last 2 3 days too and the prime minister's uh, rallies in the interiors of uh, bengal would also bring some traction so really it is a close fight uh, and, and we'll wait and watch uh, so good to know good to hear from you these numbers but yes uh, what we believe you know whosoever comes should be good for the business because ultimately that is what is going to bring in employment and the overall uh, good for the overall state so that is what we hope for absolutely thank you so much and we wish you luck mr agarwal and we look forward to having a conversation in the old world physical way uh before i let you go and get mr shetty go i want to ask my last question to mr shetty mr shetty uh what is that one change in the consciousness of uh, media companies that has come in the last 12 months uh has cost become a very important factor is innovation driving uh programming and product offering or uh, clearly it is only about survival difficult question uh, uh, and i would say all uh, uh, actually uh, uh, anurag uh, you know when uh, covid hit us uh, and uh, like i said uh, in the phase of uncertainty cost became a very important part of uh, everything we did because uh, frankly uh, it was about survival and then growing so hence relooking at costs uh, uh, and every cost line became very important and uh, in a way you know it also opened our eyes to many uh, places or spaces where we thought uh, uh, you know we realized that we could uh, you know uh, reduce cost or optimize cost and in a way uh, uh, it was good uh, i would say uh, however uh, cost cutting cannot help you grow an organization and uh, that is just a short term thing it it is a quick fix which just helps you uh and uh, i think if uh, uh, there is one thing that can help an organization grow and i would say even for every media company it is innovation and uh, uh, uh if you look at it uh, today uh, you know I, i think we are lucky that uh, you know television still continues to be very strong uh, uh, and continues to have strong loyalty uh, across the country uh, and uh, having said that if we keep, take that for granted i think uh, uh, that will uh, uh, you know i would say cause our doom okay and this is not like a immediate doom or something like that because consumers today i mean it is not a single screen uh, audience that we are talking about it is a, a multi screen audience uh, the, the consumer is consuming television is consuming content on his mobile phone his youtube uh, so he is exposed to a lot of content and hence uh, uh, you know uh, understanding consumer needs 
and uh, uh, ensuring that we uh, uh, and i would say that about uh, all of us actually that we are uh, right uh, ahead in terms of understanding consumer needs and you know generating creating content which kind of engages him uh, i think that will be a very important part so yes costs and all are important uh, in their core for survival but i think it's innovation which is the most important thing and that's something that you'll see you'll see a lot of stuff from the viacom meeting stable also in terms of new shows and new content and uh, i'm sure it will be across industry thank you so much thank you mr agarwal thank you mr shetty thank you. uh we are moving into our segment of the bit cmo awards so thank you mr agarwal you were our headline speaker uh, you were our, we had a very good lineup during during the day and i watched a couple of presentations they were high quality and with the conviction you shared uh, your brand philosophy and the why uh, clearly it would inspire uh, other young brands who want to make an impact and we wish you luck in your endeavor for imani and its brands to provide uh, health and beauty um, in a natural way to its consumer so i'm sure there'll be many more opportunities to have a conversation we'll of course talk to you after the bengal elections to, to see what happens there and thank you mahesh uh, continuing you. to innovate and partner with brands uh, in a meaningful manner back to you mithun uh, thank you thank you dr drug batra thank you mr mahesh shetty and of course mr harsh